It's begun. Hades is transmitting. Scary shit, the biomass conversion. If Hades has started the signal, it must have gotten through the defenses. The Aaron's vanguard. Yeah. I have to get up there. I don't think we're very surprised here, but honestly, like there is absolutely nothing we can do other than to stop Hades. Because once that transmission gets out and all those machines are back. It's already over. There's literally nothing we can do. I mean, humanity in 2065 or whatever couldn't do it. So I'm not sure how we're supposed to deal with an entire world of robots that have been resurrected. And their only <laughs> intention is to erase humanity. And I guess all life on Earth. Now, one thing I quickly got to check is... Are there still corrupted Elizabeth Sobek ones? Yeah, they're still under repair. Okay, right. So, one thing that's a little bit annoying is that once it's been repaired, they create a new file here. So, it's very easy if you're just kind of scrolling through to be like, repaired, 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 under repair, under repair, under repair. So, you just wait for these to happen. But, if you look at the dates, I believe they're the same files. So, you have the one, two, three, four files five files I believe and then you have one two three four so I think one of these hasn't been repaired yet which one 66 one fifteen sixty six yeah that's fine I think this one hasn't been repaired for some reason eleven nineteen sixty four has been repaired 71665 Yeah, these all been repaired except for this one, I believe. That's interesting. I don't know why. Anyway, that's the deal with those. So I thought there were still like four or five that hadn't been um, repaired yet, but it turns out it's just the same file. And I would have been really pissed if I fell there. Keep going. Keep pushing. I knew this wouldn't be easy. So no holding back. Uh, make sure all of my shit is on point here. I swear I crafted more tear blast arrows. I barely used any. All right. Got a bit of everything. They're alive. Aloy! It's Aloy! Well, you, you can see that. We thought you'd fallen at the ridge. No, the ridge fell on me. Look, there isn't a lot of time left. I have to face Hades. Not alone. My fight. I can't ask you to come with me. We were about to go over the top anyway, right? Right. The metal devil must fall. All right, that's cool. Stock up. Last chance. 
Okay, calm down. I know you're excited, but you don't need to start leaping over crates. Wait. Eh, that's annoying. Okay, so we've got almost a plus three in terms of medicinal plants. Oh, I didn't know you were here. In terms of plants, we've got fully stocked uh, health potions and all that stuff. I think there was one more health potion upgrade, carry capacity upgrade that I don't have. Yeah, I don't have a raccoon skin, which is really annoying, but there you go. We're going to have to maybe do with three less of each one. But I think we're good. I mean, there's not really much else to, to do here. So let's get on with it and hope for the best. And let's see which of our allies survive this. What kind of future is going to be left once we stop Hades? Oh yeah. So here we go, the final arena. Looks very empty now, doesn't it? Arrival of Entity has been anticipated. Entity will not halt transmission. To contrary, calculations are precise. Presence of Entity has been accounted for. Okay, I don't think anyone's surprised by that outcome. Now. We've got to remove as many components as we can. And I think, is this the one that helps against projectile hits? Let me just make absolutely sure. Because we're going to be getting a lot of projectiles. Yeah, okay. 44. Yeah, that's the best protection I have against it. I feel like I could knock these off with enough tear blast. Come on. Is it regenerating those, or is it me? I think it is. Because I thought I saw one get knocked off. Maybe it's not working as well as I thought. I mean, it's showing me the weak points, but... My usual strategy of tear blasting doesn't seem to be working here. I've not managed to blast off anything. Well, I did at the start, but I feel like it's not working anymore. So, yeah, we'll just see. Very slow to catch fire as well. But I think once we do get it, as we will in a second, there you go, that'll help. Once you get it close and there's no cover, then you're in trouble. But I've got to remember that there's a lot of places to cover as well. I don't need to be like super, super aggressive here. These will get destroyed eventually, but... Oh, there's a time limit. That's nice. Okay, alright. Now. 
Okay, maybe I do need to be more aggressive than I thought. It's only taking 65 from this, which is not a lot at all. Stay moving. If I can get it right on top of these, then we do more damage. So, we'll try and do that. Retreat a little bit. Alright, craft some more. Okay. I think we'll make it within the time. New machines, I'll fuck. Yeah, I'll focus on the big machine. Fuck, you know. I just can't seem to knock any parts off, which is annoying. Doesn't matter how much damage the parts take, they're just not, they're not being destroyed. Relentlessly doing damage to it on the same bit. It's got to keep smacking this top bit, man. I did think I'd make it in time, but I'm not so sure anymore. I don't have any big weapons with which to do damage either. But I think my guys are dealing with the smaller enemies, so that's a bonus. Oh, I've run out of shards. That's something I wasn't expecting. Shit. Wow. I really was not expecting that. That was a mistake. Alright, well that's one component removed. That took a freaking age. Gotta try and set it alight one more time. Oof. The lack of the lack of shards is a big, big problem. That's one thing that I really didn't anticipate. Because I've been so used to having them in abundance that I just completely forgot when I ran out. Careful, Aloy. Another attacker. Thanks for the warning. We've still got five minutes, so I've got to try and stay cool here. This one's persistent. Yeah, it is. Gotta not get too distracted by this thing. I'm getting knocked around here. Fire on her attacker. All right, there we go. Woohoo! I'm just kind of hoping that maybe from these machines we can get a few scraps nice of shards. Okay. It's 
set ablaze, there we go. Got to keep the pressure on, man. Time enough to be the machine's back. Oof. This is intense. But it's definitely running low now. We're getting there. And we're picking up shards from the defeated enemy, so we're just about managing here. If I can set it alight one more time, I'll be pretty close. So I'm taking some of the hits here. Just hitting it with everything I've got. Even if it's not the most efficient thing that I own. Almost there. But there it is. My way's clear. Woo. The servant is dead. Now, the master. Sorry, go search your deathbringer first, man. I can't believe that it, it almost all went to shit because I ran out of metal shards. Woo. But I think it was nice that me, Val, Sona, and Eren were the final guys taking on the deathbringer. They did a good job, man, because I think a lot of those machines that appeared later on, like the Corruptors and the Ravagers and all that stuff, they did a good job of, of taking those guys out. There's these blaze barrels here, but the Deathbringer was never going to come out far enough for that, so I'm not sure how useful they would have been for the Deathbringer battle. And I do remember Teb talking about, like, there's the banners and stuff. Maybe there was a place where I could go to to quickly get some supplies or something, I don't know. But in any case, we did it. I don't know if we have to fight anything else, just in case we do. I'm trying to not get overexcited and run straight to the finish. Because I might regret that. Whew. There you go, another zip wire fail. I'm not even going to try zip wires anymore. Screw it. Me and Zipwires don't get along in this game. I sure picked a great time to pretty much use all of my shards in order to craft other things. I think I left myself like 50 or something. Okay, I've completed my search of the area and I've got myself a lot more metal shards and a few medicinal plants. So in case there is some kind of battle after this as well, I'm somewhat prepared. Not fully prepared, but somewhat. I'm just going to craft everything anyway. Could never be too sure. Alright, we've got all the stuff. Let's do it. System threat imminent. I'm more than a threat. Ooh. Ultimate sass activated. Let's do it. Master Override Armed. To activate state name and rank. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Purging Extinction Protocol.
Okay, Gaia. Uh, sorry about that. Where was I? You were telling a story. Right. Yeah, so, um, like I was saying, it was a children's electronics kit, but I hacked the wiring to an auto battery and solar PV. So the grass caught fire. And uh, so did a, a tall pine that had stood there, I, I don't know, maybe a hundred years. Query, you were how old? Six. My mother was home, thank God, so she called the fire department, and after, she took me out to the lawn and showed me the dead baby birds, because there were nests in the pine tree. Query, what did you feel? I'm not sure. I remember yelling that I didn't care, and that's when my mother took my face in her hands and spoke. Query. What did she say? She said I had to care. She said, Elizabeth, being smart will count for nothing if you don't make the world better. You have to use your smarts to count for something. To serve life, not death. You often tell stories of your mother, but you are childless. I never had time. I guess it was for the best. If you had had a child, Elizabeth, what would you have wished for him or her? I guess I would have wanted her to be curious and willful, unstoppable even, but with enough compassion to heal the world. Just a little bit. Anyway, that's all I've got for now, Gaia. Time to tuck in. I wish you a pleasant sleep, Elizabeth. Thank you. I'll catch you tomorrow. There we go, guys. The ending of Horizon Zero Dawn. What? a game Whew. that ending there I think it just um, it summed up so much of what's good about this game I mean just like the whole atmosphere the beauty of the environment the quality of the of the voice acting the message the writing the message that she had for Aloy and just the way that the way they constructed that scene was so beautiful with Elizabeth talking about like you know if she did have a kid what would she say to her while Aloy had found her it was it was all just so well choreographed and so well done just absolutely brilliant I mean I feel like this game even though the most overwhelming thing we have is like you know the frozen wilderness and and you know the machine world and all the machines and all that kind of stuff this game just it feels like it has so much heart underneath it all and that's, what, I think, one of the things I've liked most about this game. It's a game that it's, it's done its best to, to, to basically to, to care. I mean, the stuff that they, they've shared in the game, they've tried to touch on so many different areas about like the world and the environment and humanity and, um, you know, relationships, everything. Like the religion, uh, faith, belief, everything, knowledge. They, they've really done an absolutely incredible job of trying to, to build a world that that feels real and that feels like it it has heart and it has soul and that's what I've really really loved about this game so yeah I mean from the very start the first thing I noticed obviously was just how pretty the game was and how beautiful it was and that's something that endured all the way until the end of the game I mean more than 40 hours in I was still finding opportunities for photo mode and just enjoying the environment and the world so much and that's obviously one of the, the best things about this game. But the more you go in and the more you play 
and the more you come to understand what's going on in the world and you know the characters better etc then you realize that underneath the, the the beauty of it all there really is a heart and a soul in this game and they've just worked so hard to, to bring it all together and I think they've done an absolutely stellar job having got to the end of it there, there were just so many times where I had to just just stop and think about what was going on uh, what do I think about it how would I react to certain situations what do I think is right and I think it's a game that you learn a lot about like humanity in the world but you also learn a lot about yourself I think one of my favorite bits was you know the the whole situation with the alphas related to the zero dawn program and the fact that each of them kind of represent a different part of humanity and a different way of thinking and approaching the situation and you listen to all of their accounts and all of their reactions and for every single one you have things that you agree with things that you disagree with and you you're like oh I, i'm probably a bit more like this person so it's, it's like a little kind of psychology test to see where you stand in terms of like these sorts of issues and of course probably there's a very high chance thankfully that we're never going to experience something like this in our lifetime i mean even if we have like a big humanitarian crisis or whatever we're not going to be the people in a position to make decisions about the future of humanity so obviously it's all very very theoretical and speculative about what we might think about these situations because we're never really truly going to be there and live it most likely so we can only just kind of go by what we're experiencing in the game but it really asks some incredible questions and um, it's just it's been such a such an incredible ride for me I would say I've pretty much loved every single minute of it it's been one of the longest games I've played for a while um, Bloodborne was also an extremely long game but that was for very different reasons this one was probably the longest game I played in a while where I've been kind of um, engaged in some form of story some form of progression some form of world building throughout bloodborne a lot of that was about kind of you know progression like getting to the next boss beating the next boss getting stronger getting better that kind of thing but that was kind of very much in the background here for me this was very much about the journey very much about exploration very much about understanding and knowledge and all that kind of stuff so absolutely loved it it's definitely got to go down as one of my favorite games of all time i mean easily top 10 best games I've ever played just so so good gameplay wise um, I wasn't too sure at the start about kind of it being so bow and arrow heavy because I love the bow and arrow and I was wondering how restrictive that was going to make the gameplay because as you saw especially when the combat gets more intense the bow and arrow can just sometimes feel too slow but I think the more the game goes on and uh, your arsenal expands you know Yes, I didn't use things like the trip caster and the rope caster and stuff, but they're there for a different kind of playstyle. But the Rattler definitely helped. It gave me a little bit more of a kind of a, a machine gun feel because if we're comparing this to games that are like third person action adventure games, you tend to have some kind of machine gun type weapon as well. I think the Rattler fills that role. It's like half machine gun, half shotgun kind of thing. Um, but the arrows, like the different varieties that you had, the tear blast arrows, and you realize how useful they get as you move further on in the game. Uh, setting enemies on fire you had the sling with the with the sticky bombs and like the proximity bombs and all that stuff so all in all I feel like there was definitely enough variety there to, to make it interesting and I think they probably made up for the potential lack of variety in your weaponry and the, the way you can attack enemies by making the enemies themselves have enough variety so so I mean if you're comparing this again to, to games like Tomb Raider which is for me probably still the closest like direct comparison um, in Tomb Raider you almost exclusively fight human enemies and there's a few animals that you have to fight as well but the idea is always the same you know okay animals might have certain weaknesses obviously you've got your headshots and all that stuff but generally there is a tried and tested way of killing everything and that's the same in this game for the human enemies where it was pretty much the, the same kind of thing that we're all used to from those kind of games. So when we went into like a bandit camp, it was, you know, get the, the sharp shot bow out, try to headshot people. If it got a bit manic, just go in with, with a rattler and just try and take everyone out, etc. That's all stuff we're used to. But the machines, they were the star of the show in this game. The machines offered so much variety and so much interest, I think, in this game. Because if you look at the, the, the number of different machines, I think it was a good enough number to to make it feel populated and to feel like there was diversity there but each machine had its own strengths its own weaknesses 
uh, its own components that did damage in different ways and you had to usually come up with different ways of taking them out. Some of them you're more confident and you just you would just go head to head with them. Some of them you had to keep your distance and try to snipe them out a bit more. Some of them you had to really make sure that you try to break it down and take away the damaging components and all that kind of stuff. And I think when you put it all together it made for a very compelling gameplay experience. And I definitely enjoyed it from, from that point of view as well. Um, you know, the lore and the world building seemed really, really good. We had a fair few side quests. There was probably about 10 errands that I missed as well. And I'm sure if I did them, some of them were going to be much more kind of basic uh, fetch questy or just go defeat this thing than the others. But I'm sure doing the 10 errands would have built the world a little bit more as well. Um, there were data points that I missed. I got all of the audio ones, which I'm happy about, but I think maybe there was a handful of text ones that I missed. And obviously there's some, uh, there's vantage points and there's other data points throughout the world that I missed as well. But I think overall, I'm still very happy with the balance that I struck, like on a personal level, in terms of what I feel like I did with the game, I'm very much happy with it. Obviously, everyone's going to have a different opinion on that. Some people would have liked me to, to get more things or would have been annoyed that I missed certain things out. Some people would have preferred me to do less of that stuff and just focus like more on the main story itself. But in terms of how I feel, I'm very much happy with it. We ended up with about 70% completion. I got all the audio points. Uh, I got almost all of the, the text points as well. I read out a lot of the data points that we picked up, like the, the glyphs and all that kind of thing. So we got a good insight into uh, you know, the, the Sun King, the Sundom, the Sun Faith, the religion. Uh, we got our understanding of Pharaoh Automated Solutions, and we got our understanding of Aloy, uh, her place in this whole thing, and Operation Zero Dawn. So I think in terms of the data and the knowledge that we got from the game, I think I'm, I'm happy with what we got. And it was definitely enough to, to build a quite vivid picture of what this story was trying to tell and the world that it was trying to tell it in. So in that sense, everything was all good as well soundtrack was perfectly good for me i mean it was um it for me like this is the kind of game where it i felt like the soundtrack blended really well with the environment and some of the audio cues felt like they were really well done as well so from that standpoint as well i think it was definitely a very good game so we're reaching the end of the credits let's see what happens here Okay, this is Frozen Wilds, but we haven't played that yet. So we'll probably look at this once we're done with the Frozen Wilds. I'll get to that. So I'll skip that. So what happens now? post credit scene? How much later after... Oh no. Oh no. friend remember me we've still so much to discuss so much you never revealed your masters for example the ones who sent the signal that woke you knowledge has its rewards don't you think well let's begin damn it silence if you could see me right now on face palming. God damn. So that's why people are like Horizon Zero Dawn 2. When's it going to happen? I guess, you know, there's a failsafe of a failsafe. And Silence seems like the kind of guy that could have concocted something like that. Okay, well, I have no problem with that. It keeps it interesting. I'm not going to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn 2 potential yet. I'm still not done with my little initial thoughts slash review of the game but I'm hoping I'm going to get just dumped back into the world at my final level okay congratulations on defeating Hades and protecting Gaia's dream of an earth reborn 
The state of the world has been restored to just before the looming shadow, prior to the final battle for Meridian. You keep all loot and experience from your successful playthrough. Sweet. Additionally, New Game Plus has been unlocked, granting the option to play the game again from the beginning with all the loot and skills you've accumulated throughout this playthrough. New Game Plus, a New Game Plus loadout of your current inventory and skills has been created. To play this mode, simply choose the New Game Plus option in the main menu. You can also create new loadouts via the pause menu in the game. Thank you for playing the Horizon team. Excellent. This is exactly what I wanted. Perfect. So we complete the game at level 42 as well. Sweet. Uh, yeah, okay. Excellent. So now I can keep talking. So where was I? I talked about the gameplay and how happy I was with all of it. And the soundtrack I had talked about as well. I think... Yeah, I mean, I've said pretty much most of what I want to say from... Uh, the positive side of things. Now let's talk about things that could be better because of course no game is perfect, never will be and it's my job as a person playing through the game to share my thoughts on things I didn't love as well. Um, I think two things in my mind that stick out that I've already mentioned in the game but considering that this is like a, a summary of everything I might as well talk about it now. Um, I would say that Probably, from a technical standpoint, this game is an absolute triumph for reasons I've already mentioned to do with, like, you know, the visuals and the world and, you know, the I think the, the animations in general are, are very good. Uh, the soundtrack is good. The sound cues are good. I think, in general, technically, this game is fantastic. But the only thing, I think, from a technical standpoint that kind of stood out a bit to me was uh, the facial animations. I mentioned it before, but I think... The facial animate woohoo. Facial animations. Never know when um, I need these. Especially for Aloy, they, they did feel a bit flat and expressionless sometimes. Now, I don't know the reason why and how intentional that was. I mean Aloy isn't the most uh, emotional and kind of animated person in general anyway, but that's not really what I'm talking about. It's more kind of it's hard to describe, but with some characters, you really got to feel for their, their facial animations and their expression. But Aloy sometimes, especially given the context of what she's saying in some of the lines, it, it did feel like her delivery was a little bit flat because of the expression and the, and, and the facial expression that she had or didn't have. So that's one thing I noticed. It was, it was a bit hit and miss. For some characters, I think it was really, really good. Um, you know, like characters like Tissa and stuff, I think it was, it was absolutely fine. And there were other characters for which I think it worked okay, but I think it could have been more. it could have been a little bit better. That's one thing I would say. Um, other than that, I think AI-wise, I, I still I'm still not 100% happy with the way um, the whole kind of caution and alert system works and how the AI behaves in those situations with this game. I still think that could have been done better because there were there were multiple times where you saw, for example, in bandit camps where you would have um, like a single arrow shot and the entire camp would go into this caution mode. And let's say you shoot one person and the person next to them sees that, then pretty much like it feels like everybody goes on alert. And if there's 20 people in the camp, they all come to the same place and they all just funnel in and you can just take them out. So in that sense, I feel like they could have done like something to make it better, like maybe make it less sensitive uh, make the AI less aggressive, potentially. I don't know, but I feel like there needed to be something there to, to tweak it a little bit. Maybe, I'm just thinking, like, would a, would a higher difficulty be something that, that kind of compensates for that? But I feel like it wouldn't be, because enemies would be harder to kill, and they'd be even more sensitive than they were before. So, I don't know, maybe f for from my perspective, it might get even worse. I don't know, so... Yeah, those were the two main kind of things that I noticed. Um, I think... Like I said, I wasn't overly happy with the way... Um, near the end of the game, Silence kind of made it seem like this is the point of no return. If you've got shit to do, do it now because, you know, like this is it kind of thing. And then it turns out there's still like six, eight, ten hours after that point, And it's not actually... 
a hard kind of barrier. So that was a little bit frustrating because, you know, it might it might change the way you approach the ending of the game and like what you're going to do before the end. So it's kind of a bit of false information to be honest. But what I'm talking about here are fairly fairly minor gripes. I mean, none of these I think detracted from my enjoyment of the game at all. But they are things that I noticed while I was playing. So yeah, overall, that is my um, opinion of the game. Like Those are my initial thoughts. There's probably more things that I could talk about, but for now, these are the things I deem. Um, like These are the things that are fresh in my mind that I wanted to, to share with you guys as I reach the end. There is still a DLC to come, so maybe I'll have some more thoughts by the time I'm done with the DLC as well. But for now, I would say this has been one of my favorite games of all time. Top 10 favorite. Not sure if it goes into my top 5. Probably not top 5. But probably somewhere between 5 and 10 for my favorite games of all time. And that is no joke. Like this, is, this was a seriously, seriously great game. Of course, I have to thank everybody for watching along. Especially given how long the series is. Because I honestly was not expecting this to be such a long series. Um, I thought, you know, if I make like 25 to 30 minute episodes for each one. It would be maybe like... 35 40 episodes tops but here we are i have no idea how many episodes we've got done now but it's got to be like 50 60 at the very least so to the niche audience of people on the dance great channel that are enjoying this playthrough i really really appreciate you guys uh, i always know that these playthroughs aren't going to do as well as my final fantasy ones and the views kind of speak for themselves it gets maybe like you know 25 percent of the views that the final fantasy content gets but that's not a problem for me because I'm having a great time playing these games and putting in the work for it doesn't really bug me because I'm just enjoying the game so much and the feedback that I get from the people that are watching the series is just so great and it's it's a pleasure to play these games for you guys and I love the fact that you guys are still here supporting me even with series like this that don't do as well as the Final Fantasy stuff. Of course a special shout out to all of the people on Patreon that are supporting me. You guys are helping me to keep making these series as well. Given the fact that I'm doing YouTube professionally, uh, I spend like you know a full-time job's worth of time on this. Uh, I'm working you know many many hours every day to try and record and to edit and to maintain the channel and create the content that you guys love. So the fact that there's people on Patreon supporting me is just so awesome. And from a financial standpoint, it allows me to continue to create this content because I don't have to worry about views and you know how much revenue is coming in from each video and all that kind of stuff. It leaves me free to play pretty much whatever I want, whenever I want to play it. As you know, when you're pouring this many hours into actually creating LPs for the channel, I might have had to come to the stage where I'm like, okay, if I want to play a game like Horizon Zero Dawn, I'll probably just play it my own time because all of the extra editing and rendering and all that kind of stuff, uploading, um, the entire creation process is probably something that's not going to be worth my time on the channel. So I'll just continue to stick with Final Fantasy and play uh, games like Horizon Zero Dawn for myself and just do that in my own time. But this extra support from Patreon is just so valuable in allowing me to continue to play the games I'm interested in on the channel and share it with you guys. Of course, aside from the patrons themselves, anyone who's watching the series, regardless of whether you're a patron or not, the fact that you guys are still here watching it with me and that's liking the videos, that's commenting and all that kind of stuff, it all means so much. It's one thing to just enjoy playing a game for yourself and to have fun during that time. But when you have an audience of people that you know is enjoying what you do, and they're letting you know that they enjoy what you do. It just makes it so much sweeter and more fulfilling. And that feeling is something that truly is one of the biggest catalysts for having something like YouTube. Because, you know, all of the views, all of the money, all of that kind of stuff, put that all to one side. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of other jobs that I could be doing right now that would earn me more money at the end of the day. But they do not come anywhere near the freedom, the enjoyment, and the fulfillment that I get from YouTube. So when it comes to how I choose to spend my time, you know, how I choose to spend my 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours of the week, YouTube will win all day, every day. And all of you guys are responsible for that. So a huge thank you for allowing me to continue to do what I love to do. So that's it, guys. That's all I have to say. Uh, as for what's going to come next for this playthrough, um, I'm going to be focusing on Final Fantasy for a little while now. I don't know how many episodes I've got stocked up. We will have to see as time goes on. But at some point in the near future, I will be doing the DLC of this game. And once the DLC of the game is done as well, which I believe is at minimum probably another 10 hours or so, then it'll be time to play a new non-Final Fantasy game. And then I will decide what I want to move on to next. 
So that's it, guys. Thank you all so much. It's been my absolute pleasure to play this game for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it. I'll be back with the DLC fairly soon, and we'll be diving back into the world of Horizon Zero Dawn to continue to enjoy this beauty for another 10, 15 or so hours before we wrap things up for good and move on onto the next non Final Fantasy game on the channel. So thank you all for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon.